Hello and welcome to the Game Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to continue talking about Niagara and texture samples in Unreal 4. For this video, we'll be going over skeletal meshes. And in a way, we'll be revisiting some of the previous topics as well. So I've imported a few things. I've imported this skeletal mesh, as you can see here, and it has this material instance on it. And that material instance, I created from this master material. It's nothing too complex. I just have a few texture samples in here. And then the textures that I'm using are an AORM, ambient occlusion, roughness metallic, a base color, a normal, and then I also have this emissive mask. In the RGB, there's color, but in the alpha, it's just black and white. We're gonna be using this a little bit later. Now, I've also imported two animations. I have one where my chest opens up, and one where my chest closes. So to get this started, I'm gonna right click in my content browser, go to effects, and I'm gonna create an empty emitter, and then I'm gonna name it NE, whatever you want. And then I'm gonna open it up and save it. Now the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna set up the skeletal mesh first before we set up the texture sample. So under emitter update, I'm gonna spawn some particles, with a spawn rate, I'm gonna set that to something like 3000. And then under particle spawn, we're gonna come down to location, and we want skeletal mesh location. Now you're gonna have this error, and that's just because we haven't put anything into the preview mesh yet. This is where we wanna put our skeletal mesh. So for my case, I'm gonna put my chest in there, and then I'm gonna save it, make sure it's compiled. And right now our particles are a little big, so I'm gonna come back to initialize particle, and I'm gonna to go to the sprite size mode, just make this uniform for now. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. I'll set it to something like one, let it compile. You can see right now, the particles are just spawning on the bones. So if I come back to my skeletal mesh location under mesh sampling type, we wanna change this from skeleton bones to either surface vertices or surface triangles. I'm gonna do surface triangles so that they actually spawn on the surface. Then I'll hit save, and we can see that the particles are showing up on the surface here. Now, it might be a little bit small now, so I'm gonna increase the size. I'll set this something like three, maybe even four. And now we can go and add our texture sample. So under particle spawn, I'm gonna type in texture. We want sample texture. Now, if you get this error, you just need to change your emitter to GPU. So if we come to emitter properties, we wanna change our sim target to be GPU compute set. And then we also need to turn on fixed bounds. Now, because my mesh is a little big, I'm also gonna change the size of the fixed bounds. I'm gonna put negative 300 in each one of these. And then I'm also gonna change the max to 300. Now, back in our sample texture, the texture that I wanna put in here is actually the emissive for this. You can put the base color in, but I actually wanna make it so I spawn the particles in a specific area. I'm gonna mask them out. Now, nothing's working yet. We need to put something into the UVs. So if we come up to this eyedropper right here, and we click on show parameter rights, like usual, we can see that we're outputting from the sample texture, sample color, and sampler UV. If we come to the skeletal mesh, and we look at the rights, we can see that there's a sampled UV output for the skeletal mesh. So we can use that. We can actually put that into our sample texture. So I'm gonna click on this dropdown and I'm gonna type in sample and you'll see sampled UV skeletal mesh location. Now nothing's working yet and that's because we need to colorize this now. So with the appropriate order of operation, I'm gonna click on add and I'm gonna type in color. And now in this color, we wanna link this to our sampled color. So we'll come back here and click on the dropdown. We'll do link inputs output, and we want sample texture, sampled color. And now if we save that, let it compile, we'll let this play, and you can see that I have some particles spawning here. And just to show this really quick, if I change this emissive one back to the base color, you'll see that this shows up all over it. And it's actually taking the color from my texture and applying it all around. But I want to use that emissive mask, so I just have particles spawning in this one shape. So I'm going to switch that back to emissive. Just let this spawn. 
And I think I actually want the spawn rate to be a lot more. So I'm going to set it to 10,000. I also want to come down the particle update. I'm going to do add velocity. I'm just going to fix this really quick so I can add soul forces and velocity. We'll let that compile. We'll actually add some velocity here. So my particle's going up now on the Z. It's pretty cool. And now I actually want to continue to increase this. So I need a lot more in here. But you can see that as I keep upping this, we're getting a drastic amount of particles. And not only that, but because I'm using this texture, everywhere where there's black on this texture, we're still spawning particles, but they're invisible. They're alpha out. So now I want to go and kill those particles. So under particle spawn, I'm going to click on plus, and I'm going to type in kill particles. Now in kill particles, I want to do a comparison. You know, basically I want to say, Hey, on that texture, wherever it's alpha out, I want those particles to die. So the way that we do that is we're going to convert this kill particle to a comparison. We're going to do a float. And right now, this is basically just saying, hey, if B is not equal to A, kill it. So right now, because this is zero, we're not going to be spawning any particles. So we can get that texture information. I'm actually going to change B to a linear color. This way, we can change this linear color to our texture, to this texture right here. So I'm going to change this linear color to the sampled color. So under the dropdown, we'll go to Link Inputs, Outputs, Sample Texture, Sampled Color. And now, I don't actually want to use the RGB. I want to use the alpha channel of this texture. So I'm going to set it to alpha, and I'll click Save, let this compile. You can see that we're starting to spawn a lot less particles. Yeah, we're only spawning like a thousand now. So I'm actually going to come to spawn rate and I'm going to change this number to 200,000. <laughs> Something crazy. Now let's do a little less. We'll do 90,000. We'll just adjust this really quick. Okay, so we're getting like 60,000. And then in my initialized particle, I think I want to make these a little bit bigger. Something like that six. Or how about we change this to actually be a range? So we'll do a random range. And we'll make it anywhere between four and seven. That compile. And now I think I'm going to change the lifetime so they die a little sooner, maybe two. Maybe even one. Okay. So now we need to actually go and apply this to our mesh, to our skeletal mesh. Now, the cool thing about the skeletal mesh location is when you child this, to your skeletal mesh in a blueprint, it just works. So now I'm gonna close out of this and I'm gonna right click and create my Niagara system. We'll name this correctly. NS. And now I'm gonna create my blueprint. So I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to blueprint class and we're just gonna make an actor. And I'll just name this BP, whatever you named it before. And then I'm gonna open this up. Now. The first thing we want to add in here, we want to add a component called Skeletal Mesh. And in this Skeletal Mesh, in the details, we want to come over to Mesh, Skeletal Mesh. And this is where we add our Skeletal Mesh. So I'm going to add my SK Chest 2 which is massive. Now I'm going to drag this on top of the default scene root to get rid of it. And now we're going to add our Niagara system. So we have that added and it's childed. And over in the details panel, this is where we want to add the Niagara system that we just made. Cool. Cool. So now we can see that this is working. But we don't have any animations playing yet. So I'm going to come to my event graph. And I'm going to set some things up. 
So I'm going to base this on keyboard presses. So we have to start with event begin play. I'm going to drag it off of there and I'm going to enable inputs. And we need to enable the inputs on something. So I'm going to get the player controller for when we actually play the game. And now I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in keyboard. Then you can use whatever key you want. I think I'm going to use P just for P for play. So the next thing we need is a reference to our skeletal mesh. We want to play an animation. So I have a reference, I'm going to drag this out, we want to type in play, and we get play animation. Now I can say, when I press P on the keyboard, I'm going to play a certain animation for my skeletal mesh. Now for this one, I'm going to do the chest opening, and then I want to copy this, and I'm going to paste it. So when I release P, I'm going to play this animation for the skeletal mesh, and that animation is going to be my reversed one. So this should be all set up now. I'm going to compile, I'm going to save it, I'm going to close out of this, and I'll get rid of this skeletal mesh. I'm going to drag this blueprint out so you can see it. I'm just going to position this in front of my player controller a little bit. I'm going to hit play. Oh, we just look around, it's not doing anything. Hit P on the keyboard, boom. Release it, boom. <laughs> cool. So because there's a lot of information here, let's recap really quick. So we created a Niagara emitter, and this Niagara emitter, we set it up so particles would spawn on a skeletal mesh. Then after that, we created this sample texture, and we used this sample texture to mask out a specific area on the mesh. So we would just be colorizing a specific area. And then for efficiency, we added this kill particles module. And then we put it all together by creating our Niagara system and creating our blueprint. All right, guys, if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks, guys.